American Eagles. The Corsair is about to take off, debuting its brand new scratch built drop tanks, which I believe, and this wasn't a wartime feature, but I believe are chocker full of Easter eggs, spoiler wrap Easter eggs. Happen. And maybe on Sunday, perhaps we'll see a drop of eggs. I don't know. This is I'm making this up as I go along. Work with me here. Yes. Well, I'm hoping they're Easter eggs because um, otherwise we're in trouble. Yes. Yeah. No, Mike, uh, Mike Jones, the current owner. It's just a tip to make that aircraft the very best presentation it can be. And there's been all sorts of uh, here at Wally, yeah, yeah. discussion in the background about you know how the scheme will pan out and what have you. Oh, certainly they did with the metal ones. Beautiful shot. And there's this young fella that uh, was was helping put this balloon back into the air. Certainly responsible. Now look at this break here from the L39s. Well, Frank up, Frank's the man now, and he can sit back and relax and watch the display. Those 400 equipped over, I think, about 13 squadrons uh, in the Royal New Zealand Air Force and used with very telling effect. Squad. 
Squadron Royal New Zealand Air the way through till October 1948. <laughs> and also the British Pacific Fleet, where they had a, uh, a kill ratio of 11 to 1. aerobatic pilots you just wonder how they keep situationally aware when the aircraft looks as if it's completely out of control. Yak-52 uh, first flew in 1976 and there were over 2,000 of these built, mainly in the Aerostar factory at Bacau in Romania. Three hundred and sixty horsepower Vadenyev M14. It's a nine-cylinder radial engine, and uh, that's the standard form. They can also be fitted with four hundred horsepower. Uh, variations of uh, two or three-blade prop, just depending on the on the horsepower output. Uh, Jurgis just makes this look so so simple. A lot of energy management taking place here. Yak-52 developed as a training and advanced level aerobatic aircraft and also used in championships. It's uh, incredible, again, des uh, designed in Russia and designed to operate in very rugged environments. In fact, it was designed for use by the Russian DOSAF. Uh, DOSAF, when translated, is the Volunteer Society for cooperation with the Army, Air Force and Navy. It's basically a paramilitary organisation to uh, introduce people to flying at the very early stages of military career or pre-military career. goes back to the Yak-50 from which it was basically designed. And you'll see a number of uh, odd features with this aeroplane. Have a look under the wings and you see the wheels are still sticking down. Why would you have a retractable undercarriage if the wheels still stick down below the wing? Well, very simple, because these were trading aircraft. And if coming into land, you forgot or didn't read your checklist and left the undercarriage up, the aircraft would still be able to run along on those wheels. Of course, it had smashed the prop, but it would really not damage the aircraft substantially. Uh, quite a clever feature in there. And again, very simple to uh, operate. Very extensive use of pneumatics, uh, compressed air for the engine start, for the flaps and also for the brakes. Uh, 
uh, Forte has always been unlimited freestyle aerobatics, and that's allowed him to develop his quest for new flight possibilities for himself, and as we mentioned earlier on, inventing his own aerobatic manoeuvres. They include that Carey's wheel, the small loop, and he was the first to successfully perform Pugachev's Cobra manoeuvre in a propeller-driven aircraft. Sukhoi 31 saw that aircraft with many, many championships over quite a few years. But his, his uh, aerodynamic experience and also his flying experience into looking for what would be the ultimate aerobatic aircraft. 52 has an inverted fuel and uh, oil system that allows the aircraft to fly inverted for uh, about two minutes. If you have a look at the wing, it is very, very flat. And the wing also has a profile that's very symmetrical, so that allows it to fly well, both inverted and upright. demonstration there by Jürgis and we welcome him back here to Warbirds over Wanaka. Now that's a party trick that has been used for many many years disappearing down into the Clutha.
aircraft operated uh, this weekend by the US Air Force, Pacific Air Forces. It's the uh, whole world broken up into different areas by the US military. has a crew of four and can carry more than 100 passengers or 54 passengers plus cargo. If you have a look, this aircraft is now coming in in what's called a configured or dirty pass. swan on the sky that uh, looked very slow but it's it looks slow because of its size but uh, with regard to uh, its maximum speed it's a, a lot different you can think of these aircraft delivering uh, cargo to uh, locations all the way around the world because there are larger aircraft you've got the uh, c5 galaxy but uh, this is the mainstay of the U.S. Uh, military transport. Carry a variety of uh, combinations of cargo. Uh, uh, it's, it's fabulous to be able to enjoy the spectacle of uh, visiting C-17 here at Warbirds Have a Wanaka. And this aircraft will be displaying over the next couple of days as well, around lunchtime I believe, so uh, this is just a wee taster for us today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last weekend I think we'll be seeing the display by the C-130H of the Royal New Zealand Air Force, the workhorse of the RMZAF for many years. And lo and behold, that's your lunch arriving. That's my lunch arriving. arriving. Yeah. That is the first time I've seen that happen here at Wanaka. I think you might be right. I, I can't recall having previously seen it, but obviously that memo got through. Looks like a big uh, cheese and onion toasted sandwich under there, Kat. That's a very large one. Now that is enough to the islands that you uh, assist. There'll be people flying these RNZAF assets across this air show weekend here at Wanaka who came here with their parents as kids, maybe toddlers, and their first experience of aviation uh, was right here at Wanaka. I, I hear this all the time, I know it for a fact. And uh, these people grow up and they join the service. Uh, they're